Hello fellow vapors and welcome to the Devil Vapor Vape Reviews. It is time to review the Aspire box. So the Aspire Box, a collaboration project between Aspire Prestige, Sunbox and At Mizu. CNC machined from stainless steel and aluminium and it has a 60 watt chip inside there powered by a single 18650 battery. Now currently at the time of recording there are three different pods you can put in here. You have got the Nautilus pod which takes the Nautilus calls, the BP pod which takes the BP calls and the At Mizu Cubix RBA which you can put what ever call you want inside there look like this little rebuildable deck jobby wobby woo um yeah so there will be three different versions of this going out to market now um uk aspire vendor are stocking the nautilus version but you can buy the cubics rba separately you can also get the bp version and the version that i've got here today which is the dulux version which comes with all three different pods now pricing will probably pop up at the bottom of the screen here but it's around about 95 quid around about that at time of going to press but yeah they come out with this beautiful little thing so yeah, um, what are we going to talk about it? Yeah, we're going to talk about it down at the table to be completely honest. We're going to skip a lot of the faff. We're going to go down to the table. Um, because this is going to be a little bit of a long review, down at the bottom of the screen here, there will be timestamps to different sections of the review. Also in the um, the description down below, there will be timestamps as well, just so you can read the different chapters as well. So if you do wish to skip to a little bit, then go on there if you wish. If not, just sit back, relax, and watch the whole of this video. So yeah, what we're going to do is go down to the table, uh, have an unboxing. We're going to show everything you get inside the kit. Um, then we're going to get the pod set up. We're going to do a build on the Cubix RBA, and then we're going to bring them all back up top and give my overall thoughts and opinions on all three different pods as well as the mod itself. So without further ado, I'll see you down at the table with the Aspire box. So this is the brand new Aspire box. Now I've got mine in the Dulux edition, which comes with everything you can possibly get at the time of release. So let's have a quick look at what you get in the box. So we just slide this open here and you'll be met with your prestige logo at the top there. This has got your user manuals and all that jazz in there. So please give that a read beforehand. You also get a few bits of accessories in there. Um, a little tool there, as well as some spare gaskets and O-rings. As well as that, you get the box mod, the 4ml pod for BP coils, the 4ml pod for Nautilus coils, and the Cubix RBA pod. And below that, you've got your coils and airflow adapters. So you've got your BP mesh coils along the top, Nautilus core adapter, 510 drip tip adapter, a 510 drip tip, your Nautilus BVC coil, and a Nautilus 2S coil, as well as your airflow adapters for the Cubix. So you've got a plethora of ones here, top and bottom airflow, We'll go into those in a little more detail later on in the review. So let's start with the BP pod. This is pretty much the same as other pods in the thing, but this takes the BP calls. And that is it there. You've got your filling port there and you whack your coil in the base there. Chimney up the top, absolutely fine. So let's go through the coils. So the first coil we are looking at today is the 0.17 ohm, 45 to 55 watt coil, and that is a mesh coil. The second coil we'll be looking at today is a 0.3 ohm, and that is rated at 30 to 40 watts. And yet again, that is a mesh coil. The third coil is a 0.6 ohm, 15 to 25 watts. And down there, that is a regular round wire coil. And the fourth coil we're looking at today is a one ohm, 10 to 16 watt regular round wire coil there. So this is the Nautilus pod and it is made for Nautilus coils. So let's have a look at the coils that you get inside this kit. So the first one is the Nautilus BVC coil and it's rated at 1.8 ohms and you should vape it between 10 and 14 watts and it is a regular round wire coil. And the second one is the Nautilus 2S mesh coil and it is rated at 0.7 ohms and should be vaped between 20 and 25 watts. And as you can see, the mesh down the center there. 
In the Nautilus coils are quite easy to insert. First, you've got to take your adapter out, which is included in the kit. Screw it on like so. Now, this has got the airflow adjustment on the base there. So, see this little scrolly bit? You can have it fully open, fully closed, and anywhere in between. I've currently got the 2S mesh coil. And then what you want to do is whack that inside the base there. Orientation really doesn't matter, I don't believe. No, it goes in absolutely fine. So you can have that any way you want. And once again, to fill this up, pull that portion back and then dump it full of your chosen e-liquid. And once again, when you're done, pull that flap over like so. And then you want to leave that to sit upright for around about 10 minutes to make sure that it is nicely saturated. And the third pod to be included in this kit is the Cubix by Atmizu. And this is an RBA pod. So you can put your own coils in at the base of this and, you know, tailor it to what you want your vape to be like. So just simply pull the base open like so. We'll have a quick look on the inside. Bit of a chimney action there. And that is where your wicks will go and your e-liquid will come in. If we have a look at the base here, you've got a simple kind of like two post postless deck design. You can put your wicks in these channel here. Now your airflow insert is down at the center here. To get them out is a little bit of a fiddle. You've got your airflow control ring here as well. Now let's show you how to replace those little airflow sections now. You've got a plethora of them here. You've got your bottom airflow ones here and your top airflow ones there. The bottom ones, they screw in via the 510. So what you want to do is unscrew this center pin here. Now you want to make sure you keep everything together. Unscrew that with a flathead screwdriver. Then pop it out. Sometimes it helps just to unscrew the airflow base as well. So you've got a bit more to play with. And then, there we go, if we unscrew that a bit more. And then things should start falling out. Now, all this kind of comes out as one. So you've got your post there, and then that comes out with the airflow insert there. As you can see, see the post and the airflow insert. Now, the airflow insert, you push out like so. And this one in here currently is the four millimeter one. And you've got a whole either side like so. Now, what you want to make sure of when you put this all back together, down in the center there, you can see... If I poke this on the other side, you can see your little airflow channel down here. There we go. You want to line up those holes with that airflow channel. So you kind of want the holes to be on this side and that side, and then you'll be getting the right amount of airflow. So we're going to keep that four millimeter in there at the present. We're going to line all that back up. Lovely. And then you want to get that hole lined up with the right channel there. Hold, hold it in with your finger like so then put your insulator and your positive pin back in and then screw it in quite nicely. There we go, once that's all in and all nicely lined up, you wanna kind of make sure this is as square as possible. So you've got your flat ends either side. This is currently on the piss ever so slightly, but it is um, all right to adjust it. You just unscrew it ever so slightly like that and then you just wiggle that round, line it all back up, hold it in with your finger and then tighten down. Lovely, so that is the Atmizu deck. So what we're gonna do is a quick little build tutorial on this. So with the bottom airflow inserts, you get a 2 mil version, a 2.5 mil version, a 3 mil version, a 3.5 mil version, and of course the 4 mil version pre-installed. With the top airflow inserts, you get a 0.8, a 1.0, a 1.2, a 1.5, and a 1.6 and we'll just show you how they actually go in there so we've just done this build tutorial on this pod here see the chimney down the top just plonk it down in there like so grab your set of tweezers and just set it in there with the o-ring now this is a bit of a fuddle not a big fan of airflow inserts at the best of times um, these as well 
aren't really the best. So now we've got all the atomizers out of the way and the coils as well. Let's have a look at the box mod and have a quick look around. Now let me know what you think of this first impressions. Now I've got this in the tuxedo or jet black version here today, but you can get it in the quick silver version, which I believe the vaping biker has. Uh, but yeah, this looks absolutely beautiful in the tuxedo. So let's start from the top and work our way down. You've got your drip tip assembly here. Now that is held on by two O-rings. This is kind of like a proprietary drip tip system and you know that just squeezes back on. Now this also holds in your pod inside here. Now you unscrew that like so. That's got a little portion on the end there which goes into the top of the pod but we'll show you how that works a little bit later when we install the pods. So screw that back in like so. You've also got your battery door. Now I'm not a fan of this battery door right off the bat. I've told us by that. Um, it's really not nice. You've got really haven't got much to grip hold onto and when you've got the battery in there as well there's even less to grip onto. So you've kind of got to twizzle it with your fingers like that. Not a massive fan at all. But one good thing that is with this is that if you've got the mix, if you've got the old school mix and the battery cap from that, that fits directly on there. And you know, it doesn't look too out of place and you've also got a bit more to grip hold onto. So if you get one of these and you think you might not be a fan of this battery cap, then you know, put your mix one on there or buy another one. Um, if we go around to the side here, we've got box, we've got the fire button, uh, minus and plus, and aspire. Nice little cut out there. Now here is where your airflow will come in. You can see the hole at the back there. That is where your airflow will come in into the uh, the actual pod. Now, because this is has got a hole all the way through like so, you can hold it and the airflow will either come through there or the airflow will come through there. Unless you're holding it like this, you won't be blocking off that airflow, which is pretty damn amazing. Down at the base there, you've got your Design by Sunbox bin and C logo and your screen here. So now is the time to put a battery in it. So we'll take that mix uh, battery door off and then we'll put a normal one in. As you can see down the base there, the positive is clearly marked. Single 18650. Whack that in, positive side down. Now we're gonna put the original door back on, just to show you. There we go, just to show you how flush it is on there. It looks really nice when it's on there, but I just think it isn't as practical as the, the mix um, the mix top. So there we go. Um, in here as well, we haven't had a look in here yet. This is where your pods will go. So this is held on by magnets. You can either peel it forward like that, like peel it off like that, and I'm not a fan of doing it like that. I'd rather just go like this flop it up and then there we go look you it stays in place like that i think that's pretty damn cool you can just slide it now i think a slide mechanism is a lot better than you know the other but it's completely down to you at the end of the day so let's show you how to insert a pod so you can take that off if you wish get your drip tip adapter thing screw it out like so get your pod now plop it in now always put it in with the filling port on the outer put it in like that and then you want to get your drip tip screw it in like so and that will keep that in there quite blooming nicely now if you want to get a bit more grip on it and tighten it down even more this bit at the top here is knurled so you can screw that in and make sure it is nice and secure now obviously they do include a 510 drip tip adapter which we will get out here for you to see now and the other drip tip there we go so this is a drip tip adapter and drip tip so that's a spare drip tip for the one that they uh they have on here but if you want to put your own 510 drip tip on just unscrew that screw that in like so now you can use that included tool or if you have a, a large screwdriver screw that in there we go you can also use the end of your pliers if you wish there we go so that is your 510 drip tip adapter in there and if we find just a 510 drip tip off the side of my desk here and then you can put your own one in at the top if you wish and that is what it looks like now i was hoping that, that would fit a little bit more flush so uh, let's fanny about with it now i've had a fanny about and that is as flush as it goes so it does protrude ever so slightly if you are going to put your own 510 drip tip on at top like so so do keep an eye on that if that's something that is going to bother you now i've got the battery in there and all that jazz we can have a look at the screen on the bottom so this automatically boots up now you've got your resistance there, your voltage, your resistance, and your battery level there, and your applied wattage. To go up and down through them, use the up and down buttons. It goes up in 0.1 watt increments, and you can go all the way up if we hold it down very nicely, up to 60 watts. 
and then you can round robin to one watt. Now press plus and minus at the same time. This is a little bit difficult. Plus and minus at the same time. You can flip the screen. So if you choose the screen to be the other way, there we go. Now click the fire button three times. There we go, that turns the screen off, but you can still fire. So you go into like a stealth mode, uh, fire button and minus. There you go, that locks the up and down so you can't adjust the wattage there. And you press it again to unlock it, fire button and plus. There you can go, you can go into your voltage mode. You can go into your bypass mode. And then you can go back into your wattage mode. So that is pretty much blooming it. Now, uh, one thing I do want to point out while I'm down here is this is the only really defect, or not defect, but thing that's you know shone out at me uh, straight out of the box with this. And this is the kind of finish here on this airflow in. So it looks like it's been sanded by hand compared to the rest of the mod. It's a little bit scratchy. I'm not a big fan of that. So what we're going to do now is take this back up to FaceTime, take it for a two, and give my overall thoughts and opinions on it. So right, we are back up top with the Aspire box. I hope you enjoyed that down low section. Now, as this is a bit of a first impressions video, we're going to keep this short and sweet. I've picked one call from each different tank design um, as my favorite, and we're going to talk about that, but we'll talk about the other calls a little bit more blasé. So we're going to start off with the BP pod. Now, my favorite from this one is the 0.3 ohm, the 0.3 ohm mesh call. Now that is right between 30 and 40 watts. 36 watts has been my absolute blooming sweet spot. Let's take that for a quick two. The flavor and restriction on this call, I believe is the best out of the bunch. Um, you're getting around about a 7.5 to eight, maybe 8.25 out of 10. Uh, the restriction is very, very good. Obviously other people's opinions may vary, but it depends on you know what kind of restriction you like. But you know, I just think it's absolutely perfect for this mod and you're getting ba better battery life compared to the other call or the higher call. Now with the calls that you get in the BP kit, they uh, go up in resistance. And the higher up you go in resistance, the more restriction you will get. So keep that in mind. Cons about the BP pod and the BP call, I would say uh, the main thing that does kind of deter me ever so slightly about the BP calls is the non-adjustability of the airflow. If you want to fine tune it a little bit more, but the flavor is more or less pretty damn good across the mark. You're getting around about seven to eight, 8.5 out of 10 across the board on the BP calls. So next up, we are gonna go onto the Nautilus calls and I'll be back with you in a sec. So we're back with the Nautilus pod inside this thing and we have got the 1.8 ohm, I believe it is. Yes, the 1.8 ohm BVC call, which is right between 10 and 14 watts. You have got that adjustable airflow thingy at the base too. Now I've got this at 16 watts because that is where I've been preferring to vape this at. And the airflow is closed down to an absolute blooming smidge for an absolutely perfect mouth to lung vape. Beautiful flavor, 8.5 to 9 out of 10, really damn good. Yes, this call is noisier than the, whatever it is, the 2S call. Yeah, the 2S call, but it's producing some better flavor than the 2S call in my personal opinion. And I like the tightness of the draw and the consistency of the flavor from this. And you can open it up to a direct lung vape if you want to crank that airflow all the way open. You can direct lung it albeit a little bit restricted, but it is blooming possible. But I've been preferring vaping this on a mouth to lung variety. Yeah, 8.5 to nine out of 10 on this, really damn good. Cons about this on the, um, the, the Nautilus calls, I would say the airflow is a little bit noisy on the BVC call and the flavor from the 2S call isn't really that great on this. Um, I much prefer the BBC call. So next up, we are gonna go on to the Atmizu Cubics pod, and I'll be back with you in a sec. And we're back with the Atmizu Cubics pod inside here, the RBA deck. Now I've got a 0.22 ohm build in here at 40 watts. I've currently got the airflow fully open for that direct lung vape action. Let's take that for a two. Beautiful, and I forgot to say, I've got no airflow reducer in the top and the four mil airflow reducer down at the base. This is where I've preferred the vape to be with this build I've got in here today. Absolutely outstanding flavor with this build. 
9, 9.5 out of 10, really damn good. Obviously, it will depend on what build you put on there, what cotton you're using, what wick you use, and not what wick, what coils you're using, what airflow reducers you're using. It can all change with one little thing changed on this little pod, which I think is absolutely great. And you can crank the airflow up and down to suit your needs, to suit the build. And that's the main thing about this. You can tailor this so much um, just to suit the build you've put in there. And you can obviously change the build in there, put a high resistance, low resistance in, and just fanny about and suit it to you. Beautiful flavor, absolutely beautiful. So right, what we're gonna do now is discuss pros, cons, and price of the Aspire box. So now we get down to the nitty gritty bits and we're gonna start with the cons. Now I've been using this for a week now with different pods inside, different coils, different builds and stuff like that. And I've kind of got a good opinion on what this is like within those first six to seven days. And we're gonna start with the cons most obviously and we're gonna start with the drip tip holder. The metallic bit up the top there, that thing there. Now it's a little bit difficult to grab hold of it when it is a little bit juiced up to insert and remove. You've also got, when you're or putting the pod inside there, you've kind of got to wiggle it forwards and backwards to get it centered nicely on the top of that pod. Um, it is a little bit blooming annoying. Another thing with the pods as well, um, which is kind of a given, and the drip tip assembly, you get little bits of e-liquid. Um, I'll get one of the other pods here. You get e-liquid pooling in the top of here, which is, you know, it's a given. It's where condensation is going to happen. Um, but yeah, just wipe that out every time you, you change the coil or something like that, or every time you change a pod, or once a day, whatever. Uh, just you know wipe that out with a little cotton bud or something and you should be absolutely fine but it's something i want to put across now there is also a little bit of condensation happening inside the pod chamber so inside here um, when you are vaping obviously the vapor will come out ever so slightly of the airflow holes on the bottom and condense inside that chamber so yet again like with the top there make sure you mop that out you know once a day to stop the build up getting too bad but i haven't had any bad problems it's just something i've noticed while using this now another thing as well the BP pods the non adjustability of the airflow on the bottom of the coils there some people may want to fine tune that airflow even though I think personally the airflow is absolutely fine on the coils some people may want to fine tune that ever so slightly uh, going back to the top there, the 510 drip tip adapter. I couldn't get that for love nor money to sit flush on the top of the mod, this thing here. It would have been lovely to see that fit in flush on the top and just making it a little more nicer on the eye. I don't like seeing that little silver crown poking out above the top of the mod. Uh, that was a little bit of a niggly point. Uh, the battery cap. Uh, the battery cap on this, not a fan, as I said down at the table. Um, the mix one is a lot better than the box one, so if you have got the mix uh, which is this one here you know get the battery cap off of that and whack it on here and you'll be having a blooming good day um, a slight aesthetic issue on this as well the the little channel here um, as I showed down at the table there are a few little scratches on there it looks like it's been you know filed or sanded by hand and it just you know when it catches light it looks a little bit nasty whereas the rest of the mod is nice and smooth that bit just looks a little bit less uh, good or a little less as good as the rest of the mod uh, going down to the front and bottom of the mod, the um, plus and minus buttons. I'm not a big fan of them. They're a little bit, you know, they're a little bit small and a little bit close together. And I've found um, it a little bit difficult to press them correctly. I end up pressing the other one and you end up going into different combinations and stuff like that. The buttons could be possibly a little more prominent, if I'm completely honest with you, or a little further spaced apart. That would have been my preference on that. Um, another thing with the chipset on this, the resistance seems to be reading a little bit higher. Now I have got a 0.2 ohm build on here, but this is reading it at 0.22. Um, when you go with the different pods as well. So if we go to the 0.17 BP mesh call, that was reading it around about 0.2. The 0.3 was reading it about 0.34. You know, it's like that. It's around about 0.02 uh, to 0.04 out. Um, I'm not sure whether it's to do with the connection where you're putting the, the top cap on here and stuff like that, and the connection down to the bottom, whether it's not clean or whether it's not inserted properly and stuff like that. But consistently across the board, I have found the resistance to be ever so slightly out, which is 
a little bit annoying, but I've, you know, I've grown used to it. I've grown used to it. I'm not sure if it's just an issue with my one I've got here today or it is across the board. Really not blooming sure. Uh, but if we, we can go into pros now, we can go into pros. Let's take this for a quick two. So we are going to start with versatility. Now, what I do like with the B, not the BP, uh, the At Mizu Cubics pod is the versatility. You can put low own builds in here. You can put high own builds in here. You can have a really tight mouth to lung draw. You can have a loose direct to lung draw. The possibilities are more or less blooming endless, which I really do like. And then on top of that, you can adjust that very bottom, the initial airflow to suit the build as well, even more fine tuning it down. Now, everyone knows I absolutely hate airflow inserts. Now the top airflow inserts, I don't like them at all. Uh, they're a little bit fiddly to get in and out. That goes into the cons previously. Um, but what I do like, I think the pros from those airflow inserts far outweigh the cons and just the way you can tailor your vape to suit your needs. Um, whether it's high ohm, low ohm, um, high airflow, low airflow, you know, to high resistance, low resistance and stuff like that. Really damn blooming good. Now, uh, with this as well, um, I was quite apprehensive about how it would feel in the hand and to be honest with you, after using it for a while, it kind of just fits really nicely. Like when you hold it, your little finger, you're not your little finger, but your middle finger there falls really nicely into there. And however you hold it, you know, you can do it like that. You can do it like that with that finger. You know, your finger just falls into place really nicely. But I have found my middle finger just goes in there nicely. You're not blocking off any airflow or anything like that. It is blooming good. Now, another pro on this is the flavor. The flavor is really consistent across the board. Um, I would say it ranges from around about 7.5 to 8.5 on average. Obviously, it changes on the Atmizu on here because the flavor is blooming good. The Cubix is blooming good for flavor. Um, and that pretty much does it, to be completely honest with you. Um, there are lots of pros, lots of cons on here, but you know, I think the pros on this far outweigh the cons at the end of the day. So what we're gonna do now is discuss pricing. So the people that sent me this for the purpose of review slash unboxing slash first opinions and all that jazz are UK Aspire vendor. Now UK Aspire vendor are stocking the Nautilus versions of the kit. So you do get the box mod and the Nautilus calls and the Nautilus adapter and stuff like that. Now that is priced at £94.98. Pricey, yes it is pricey, yes it is pricey, but you are getting a nice bit of kit for that bit of money. Um, yes, you know, you can be putting those Nautilus calls in a, you know, 30, 40, 50 pound setup, but this is something just a little bit different, a little different to the blooming norm. But yes, I can't get away from the fact that it is quite expensive but you got you know cnc machined aluminium stainless surgical stainless steel on here really really nicely made really nicely made and it doesn't feel like a mass produced chinese box mod which i think is very very good indeed you can get it in quicksilver or tuxedo black i've obviously got mine in a tuxedo black both 94 pounds and 98 pence the aspire atmizu cubics rba the little rba pod which i've got in here today is priced at 27 pounds and 98 pence so that adds up to quite a blooming bit. Now, other people elsewhere may be selling the BP version, and I think overseas they are selling the deluxe version, which I've got here today. And I think that is retailing around about 150 odd pounds. It might be 150 or um, 170 dollars. I'm not quite sure, but I believe it's around about 150 pounds. Now, I've been um, told that UK Aspire Vendor are doing a little bit of a deal. So if you buy their Aspire version and the Cubix RBA, you're going to get 20% off the Cubix RBA. So you get two pounds 70 times two. So you get around about a fiver off that pod. Now I've come up with a little bit of a thing. Um, which I think um, may save people some more money, which is if you buy the Sunbox and, oh, not the Sunbox, the uh, the box um, in a first order and you use my discount code DV15, you get 15% off of that. So you get 15% off 94.98. And then in a separate order, like order the next day or something, buy the Atmizu Cubics RBA for 24, uh, 27.98 and get 15% off of that as well. And I think that should 
uh, come out a little bit blooming cheaper. Um, in the top of my head, that works. I'm not quite sure if it will work or not, or if it will be more, but I think it will be more than the 20% discount that they are taking off the Cubix RBA. Uh, so overall, what do I think to this after a week of using it? Yes, it's quite blooming nice. It's going to be a little bit of a Marmite mod. People may see it as a little bit expensive. Yes, it is. Um, but, you know, if you want something that's nice, um, something you can talk about and, you know, hoping going forward in the future, they're going to bring out loads of different pods for this. I really do hope they stick with this and, you know, allow new bridges or whatever you want to call it in here. Um, you know, new pods that take different calls and you can also put the things from your other, whatever they're called, billet boxes. You can put your billet box pods in here as well. And I believe it is a lot cheaper than a bloody billet box. So that pretty much rounds off my kind of first opinions um, kind of review thing on this pod. So I'd like to thank the lovely people at UK Aspire Vendor for sending this over to me for the purpose of review and all that jazz. I've been the Devil Vapor and you've been watching Devil Vapor's Vape Views.